her thread uh, and made it doomed, ruined. She ruined her thread after she had, you know, when she netted her net, she ruined it by unraveling it. That's the story of a woman who is fool, stupid, from Quraysh. Her name was Ritah bint Amr ibn Sa'd. Well-known woman that she used to have a waswasa, you know, waswasa, shaitan waswasa. She comes to net and she does also commands her slave girls to net as well, netting. Half of the day netting and then the other half of the day unravel it. So she was <laughs> making an effort to net and then making an effort to what? To unravel. What a waste of time. So what is the, what is the benefit that she got? Nothing. She netted an, you know, a jumper or something like this and then for half of the day then the other half she started to unravel it one after the other. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't be like that. So you have built, mashallah, ibadah for yourself. Don't unravel that ibadah. That ibadah, you have to keep it. And that's why the, one of the dua of the Prophet says, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hawri ba'd al -kawr. I seek, O oh Lord, in you, that is to go to disaster after I have been in good shape. I mean, a'udhu bika min al-hawri ba'd al -kawr. Al Haur, that means to go downhill. After Kaur, I mean going uphill. طيب. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He said, وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ And worship your Rabb until there comes on to you the certainty that is death. طيب. This uh, hadith, I think this doesn't, doesn't affect, so it's better. Than... Right, so this ayah. Is being already said in Bab al Mujahada, chapter of Mujahada. Mujahada is to strive, okay? And we explained it there. We talked about Wa'bud Rabbaka Hatta Yatiyaka Al Yaqeen in details. And I don't want to go ahead and repeat what I said before because we have made a, I would say, a good explanation of that verse and we have also mentioned what Ibn Kathir had said regarding it. So please refer to that chapter. Tfadl. As for the ahadith, we start with number one. And there are ahadith, one of them is narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam liked that act of worship most in the performance of which a person was regular and constant Muslim. Right, this hadith was hadith number 40, 142, which is in the chapter of economizing and the ta'a, that is to not to be extreme in your ibadah. We dealt with that, 142. And that's Aisha, she said, that is the best of ibadah to the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala is what the person keeps insisting and persistent on it, even if it is little. Right, so we go now go to 153. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu reported, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Should anyone fall asleep at night and fail to recite his portion of the Qur'an or a part of it, if he recites it between the Fajr prayer and the Dhuhr prayer, it will be recorded for him as though he had recited it during the night. Muslim. Taib. He who had slept through the what? Should anyone fall asleep at night and fail to recite? Recite what? His portion of the Quran. Okay, right. So, here, that is not just portion of the Quran. It's a portion of a Quran or portion of Salah. Hizb is means your dhikr, your Quran, your Salah. Whatever you got used to say. It's like a word. Something that you keep doing it. So this person, he had slept, and he all the time does that particular ibadah, whether it's a, a recitation of Qur'an, or whether it is a remembrance of Allah, or whether it is a prayer of the night, okay? So he says that if you have slept something that you did not intend to do so before you have done your hizb, then if you have recited it between Fajr and Dhuhr, at any time, even that means after Fajr, 
then it will be written for you just like you have recited it during the night. That means if you have been observing certain ibadah in a certain time and somehow beyond your capability you have lost it, you couldn't do it, then if you do it in that time, then you will have the full reward. I'll tell you what, even if you haven't done it whatsoever. But you were in a, in, a, in, a, in, in, in a way that you are not capable because of illness, because of a journey of a traveling, then Allah will tell his angels to write the reward incomplete, just like you have done it when you were healthy and resident. But this one is not being unhealthy or being a traveler. It's you have a person, you are in full capacity. But somehow you slept. So if you have managed to wake up after Fajr, and you did your Fajr, but your recitation was before the Fajr, and you have, you have wanted to, to do that after the Fajr or even after the sunrise, as long as it is before Dhuhr, your reward is in full. We're going to talk about, inshallah, in a moment, about the hadith where the Prophet of Allah talked about the person who does his witr and he somehow slept not to do, doing the witr. So, coming to that. Right. So, the sleep is an excuse. As long as you are sleeping correctly. So, that means you are sleeping in the time that you sleep. You're not really even exerting sort of so much effort onto yourself. And somehow you missed the Salat al-Fajr. No problem about that. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لَيْسَ التَّفْرِطُ فِي النَّوْمِ وَإِنَّمَا التَّفْرِطُ فِي الْيَقَضَ The one who does make a loss, or the one who extends and he exceeds and goes overboard, is the one not in his sleep. The one who goes overboard when he's awake. I mean, he pushes the ibadah outside its limits, outside its time, when he's fully awake. But if he pushed it outside its limits because of no control of yourself, because you have forgotten, because you slept, no problem about that. But as I said, slept in the normal manner. Not you have been, mashallah, uh, watching movies and all night, just before you, Salat al-Fajr, you want to sleep, and then you wake up, uh, Asr time. And that's the, no way that you're going to be compensating that Fajr prayer. طيب. And that's why we say to the brothers, please do not indulge into a ibadah which is super grotary. Uh, for the sake of that, so you're going to lose your obligatory. So if you're going to come to do Qiyam, today I was asking about the Qiyam, what is the best time of the Qiyam? I said 4 o'clock, half past 4. But if this Qiyam, and you had some sort of work to do late night, if this Qiyam is going to make you to lose the Fajr, better off not to do the Qiyam. You know Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, he doesn't do his voluntary siyam. Do you know that? He only does obligatory because he's weak. Radiallahu anhu arda. So he, he thinks that his voluntary fast, Allah Mas'ud, guaranteed Jannah. Allah Mas'ud, he does not do his voluntary siyam. No ithnay, no Monday, no Thursday, no Khamis, no three days. Because it affects his other ibadah, whether it's the obligatory prayer, whether it's the obligatory fast. Look at that. Ya ikhwani, the deen is spacious and, 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 and it's not, it's not the people think, oh, uh, more ibadah is more. No, it's not correct. It's the most important is consistency, persistent upon the ibadah. That's the most important thing. So if your person is, mashallah, young and agile and fit, yeah, alhamdulillah, do. But if you're not and you think you're going to lose obligatory, not on the expense to do supercrutory, not on the expense of losing obligatory. You're not allowed to do that. Type. Coming now to Hadith 154. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhuma reported, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to me, O oh Abdullah, do not be like so and so. He used to get up at night for optional prayer, but abandoned it later, al-Bukhari and Muslim. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As. He's the one known to be doing extreme ibadah. If you remember? The one who does Quran every night. Prophet told him off. The one who does fast every day. Prophet told him off. The one who does qiyam every night. Prophet told him off. And he said with him, he started with the ease. Once a month, I'm able, stronger. Until he come to one every three days. He recite the Quran every three days. Then he started with the fast. He just said three days in a month. Better, could do better. Then he started until he got 
Siyam Dawood, which is one day, break the following day. And as for the Qiyam, he said to him, the best of Qiyam is the Qiyam of Dawood, alayhi salam. How he used to sleep and he used to wake up. Subhanallah. Because he was fit, he abided himself with the extreme. And the Prophet didn't want him to have the extreme. Because he said to him, you might live long and you will not be able to fulfill it. And whenever the companions promised themselves to do something in the time of the Prophet of Allah, they will not let go. They'll keep doing it and they feel that they have fallen short. They've done a sin because they have not kept what they have promised to do at the time of the Prophet of Allah. And once he got old, he said, I wish I accepted the concession granted to me by the Prophet of Allah. That means three days in a month, once in a month recitation of the Quran, uh, as well, three days in a month, and also the Qiyam, not all, not all the night. So Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As, he is the one who's been told by the Prophet ﷺ, Oh Abdullah, لا تكن مثل فلان. Do not be like so and so. What do we understand that? This is, do not be like so and so. He did not mention his name. There's a criticism here. So if there is a criticism, it is better not to mention the name of the person. when he. So don't be like Muhammad ibn Ali, for example. Don't, like, don't do that. Just don't be like so and so. Don't mention his name. Because you want to, don't want to criticize that person in front of another person. Don't be like so and so, he said. He didn't say mention his name. Don't be like so and so. If he told you the name, you when you narrate the name to somebody else, don't narrate it. Why should you narrate it? My messenger of Allah told me, don't be like such and such. You should not mention because there's no, there's no need to make, there's no benefit. If there's a benefit, we'll mention the name. And here it could be Abdullah ibn Umar. Why? Because the Prophet in one hadith he said, Ni'mal Rajul, what a good man, Abdullah ibn Umar. But he had left Qiyam al Layl. He had abandoned what? The night prayer. So he could be Abdullah ibn Umar himself. Um, not Abdullah ibn Amr. It's Abdullah ibn Amr and Abdullah ibn Umar. It's Abdullah ibn Amr. He had a hadith narrator. But the one who's left the Qiyam huh, is the one what? Abdullah ibn Umar. He did not pray the night. The alim, the murabbi, the one who basically makes the people to understand, he should know what his students are doing. So you see that the students, uh, you are doing wrong. You should really advise them. First people you should address is students. Most important. You know what they're doing. You're asking them. Yeah. So you tell them this is correct, this is wrong, this is right. You always care for them. And also you are encouraging them to do the khayrat. I treat you as my students, and that's why I, I told you off from the beginning of my class regarding missing yesterday's class. I was really upset. I didn't find some of the students that were supposed to be there because what I love for myself, I should love for you as well. By Allah, if la, next Ahad, if I had no class, I had classes, I would come also from where I live, which is about 50 miles away, I will come here to come to the class because there's a scholar here. I will not lose my opportunity just to sit down and gain. Even some of the things that he said, maybe most of it, maybe all of it, I know it, but it doesn't matter. That's as well. Mutaba ya khwani. Khwani wallah, we are vulnerable. We are vulnerable. Fadakir fa inna dhikra tanfa al mu'mini. Remind for the reminder would always benefit the believer. Not the dis not the disbeliever. Not even the not the proper believer. Only the believer. Full belief. So this hadith also is a big proof that Qiyamul Layl is what? Supergratory. It's, it's not voluntary. It's not what? It is not compulsory. Alhamdulillah. So we know that because he said that do not be like so and so who had left the Qiyamul Layl. Qiyamul Layl, that means it's not really obligatory. Because obligatory means he says, A'udhu Billah. He will not be told, don't be like him at all. But don't be like him because of that particular issue. He's still a Muslim, so it's not compulsory. There's a proof to say that the Qiyamul Layl is not compulsory. Also, this hadith tells us it is recommended to be persistent when you do something from the good. And it is disliked for you to cut off something that you have done or you have promised yourself to do, even if it is not compulsory. So if you had said to yourself to do three rak'ah every night for Witr or five rak'ah, don't leave them. If you're traveling or you're ill, yes, Allah will write for you the full reward. Don't worry about that. Also, this hadith tells us not to be 
too, too extreme on yourself for the ibadah. Take it easy. Because, as we said before, too much ibadah, it will make you to get bored and leave the ibadah. Always. If you are going so deep, Prophet ﷺ said, well, in هذا الدين matin, this deen is strong. فَأَوْغِلُوا فِيهِ بِرِفْقُ مَنْ شَادَّ هَذَا الدِّينَ the one who started to compete with the religion, the religion will beat him, defeat him. You cannot, it is much strong. So, yani, as our Sheikh Al-Bani used to say, you know, the, the, who's, yani, a'badun nas, Dawood alayhi salam, he worship a lot, because he knew that his ages were very little. 40 years he'll die. So he's a'badun nas. And we know that the one who is the best of creation, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, did he do as much as Ibadah as Dawood alayhi salam? No. But is he better than Dawood alayhi salam? <laughs> no doubt about that. He's better than Dawood alayhi salam. But he did not do. So we know that the master of, most eminent of the son of Adam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from all this tray of Ibadah that Allah has given us, which is fasting, Ibadah, Salah, and Zakah, and all types of Ibadah, whether it's being kind to the people, kind to the parents, joining the kitchen, neighbors, and all of that. Yet the Prophet did not do all types of ibadah. Do you know that the best of fast, or the best of umrah, is the umrah where? In Ramadan. True or not? Okay. Umrah to Ramadan. If you make umrah in Ramadan, it's like making hajj with the Prophet. Did the Prophet Allah make umrah in Ramadan? No, he did not. Okay? Right? So you, you understand the Prophet is telling you he's the best, but he did not do the best. He is able to do the best. To show you that even if you are the best, you don't have to be doing the best of the best of everything. You could, you know, fall short in this. But so he's able to do Umrah in Ramadan. But he did not do it Umrah in Ramadan. And you could go as much fast, the best of fast. Is the fast of whom? Dawud. Did the Prophet of Allah fast the fast of Dawud? No, he did not. He did not fast the day, break the following day. No, he did not at all. He used to fast al ithnain wal khamis. Yes, two days, continuously, all the time. But not the fast of Dawood. Tayyip, 155. Tfadal. Aisha radiallahu anha reported when Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi, alayhi wa sallam missed the optional night salah, tahajjud, due to pain or any other reason, he would perform 12 raka'ah during the daytime, Muslim. Tayyip, here we find that the day prayer can be compensating for the night prayer to show you the night prayer is very virtuous very bound very rewardable the night prayer which is the witter of yours qiyamul layl the hajjud salatul witter all these names are the same ones taraweeh they call it in ramadan so salatul layl qiyamul layl tahajjud al witter and taraweeh five names for one thing um tayyib now, we have a hadith, this one, and we have another hadith. How can we reconcile? The first hadith is one. Prophet of Allah, he said, he who had missed the prayer of the night. Because of what? Due to pain. Pain yeah. means illness. Or other. What is the other? It's been mentioned in another hadith, sleeping. That means he got overcome with slumber and he slept. Man ghalabahu nawmun aw waja'un. In the other hadith. Overcome by sleeping or by pain. Because of the Qiyam al layl then he would pray 12 raka'ah from the day. The other hadith says, so if you have, for example, okay, your, your Qiyam al layl is 5 raka'ah. If you want to compensate, you do what? 12 raka'ah during the what? The day. Which is like Salat al-Duha. Hadith of Prophet he said, Man nasiya, man nama an witrihi, or man nama an witrihi, fal yusallihi idha dhakara. He who had slept and did not perform his witr, man nama an witrihi, or nasiya, or forgot it, then let him pray it whenever he, re whenever he remembers. So I have prayed, I pray my for example, five raka'ah. I, I forgot, or I slept, two reasons then i woke up and then i remembered after fajr or i woke up even after sunrise so i did my fajr prayer he says you pray with her 
as well. So if you missed five rakah, you do five rakah all the time, you do five, five rakah. But here this hadith says, he who had missed the night prayer because of pain, and we have added as well, your slumber had overcome you, then if you, then if you, if you have to pray 12 rakah during the day, pray through 12 rakah during the day. So this will compensate. Our Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah reconciled by the two, by the following. That if the person, he is, got used to pray, he is normal, like all the time. He prays five rakah. Somehow he slept, or he forgot, for any reason. Then soon as he remembers them at any time, even at dhuhr, even at asr, then he prays them as they are. Whether they are, he prays them, for example, with loud recitation, he will do with loud recitation. Exactly like you do with the fart. If you had slept from the prayer or you forgot the prayer, then pray it as soon as you remember it. There is no expiation except for doing that particular thing. So, for example, let's say that you forgot to pray Salat al Maghrib. You thought you prayed it, you remembered it the following day. Following day. And it was Dhuhr time. You know, Dhuhr time is silent prayers, isn't it? But you forgot. Oh, you, rem you prayed it, but it was without wudu. You thought you were on wudu, but you remembered, no, I was not on wudu. It does happen. So you pray it as it is. So three rakah of maghrib with what? Loud recitation. Let's say that you are in a journey, traveling. You prayed your Isha prayer, the two rakah, because you're on a journey. There in the place. And you prayed them without wudu. You forgot. And you remembered when you were what? Resident. And you remember at Asr time. Asr is still what? Silent prayer. You pray the prayer that you missed. How many rakah? Two. You don't pray it four. Even if you're a resident. Vice versa. If you missed Isha prayer resident. You have missed it because you forgot. You missed it because you prayed it out. No wudu. You didn't know that you were wudu. You remember it when you are on a journey. And you remembered it in the time of. For example, let's say Dhuhr time. And you are on a journey. Your Dhuhr prays it while you pray it too. How much you pray in Ra'isha? Four. Just like it. And you pray it with what? Loud or silent recitation? Loud. So if it was Dhuhr prayer you missed when you were resident, Dhuhr prayer, and four rakah, because of any reason, legitimate reason, and you remember it when you were a traveler, during the Isha time, you pray it how many? Two rakah or four? Four. Silent or? Silent, still silent, even Sisha. You pray it because it's a Dhuhr prayer. As you pray it. Now, this is the first one. So if you have missed your witr, and you do your witr all the time, and you remember it at any time, you do it exactly the same. But this person, he did not plan. He's not really a person who prays his witr. Sometimes, somehow that he wanted that particular night to make qiyam. Do you understand me? Somehow that he wanted to make qiyam. Somehow, pain came to him. Somehow, he slept. He was so tired and he slept. So that Qiyam, if he wants to compensate it, he prays what? He prays 12 rakah during the day. Do you understand the difference? This is how our Sheikh Al-Mani reconciled between the two. Uh, by, by the way, they're not easy to reconcile because they have so many sayings regarding the scholars regarding how to put these two together. So if I missed five rakah, do I pray them? Uh, Shafi means like an uh, even number, 12 rakah. So we have now made the differentiation, Wallahu ta'ala alam. We come to the following chapter. Chapter 16, observing the sunnah and the manners of its obedience. Tay, the chapter of uh, observing the sunnah and ob as well following the etiquettes of the sunnah. So we have to abide ourselves by the saying of the Prophet of Allah and the action of the Prophet of Allah and the approvals of the Prophet of Allah. This is the sunnah of the Prophet of Allah. He is the role model for us. He is the one, the role model for the one who believes in Allah, the last day. And he's the one who remembers Allah a lot. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says. And there is no way which is open to Jannah, except the way that the Prophet of Allah had opened it for you. 
All the paths to Jannah are closed. You can't go to Jannah. Except the path whom the Prophet of Allah made it for you. And that is the Sunnah of His Prophet. First ayah, قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ Fadr. Allah the Exalted says, And whatsoever the Messenger Muhammad وسلم, gives you, take it. And whatsoever he forbids you, abstain from it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding his believers to co-observe and fulfill the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and keep away from what he had prohibited. For verily, he only enjoins you and commands you to do good and prohibit you from something which is evil. And the Prophet sallam had made the fulfillment of the command is according to your ability. Prophet said, If I command you with something, you only do what is within your capability. But then when he came to the prohibition, he said, And whatever I told you not to do, then don't do it. So this hadith tells us that the ability of fulfilling a command differs from one person to another. So it is within your capability. If you're capable, then you are compulsory upon you to do it. But in terms of the prohibition, everybody is able to abandon what the Prophet of Allah had told him to abandon. So there is no such thing, I'm not able. You understand me? So if the Prophet told you off not to do it, all of us, whether the weak, the strong, young, old, huh? you have to abandon it. As for the... A command to fulfill it is according to your ability. How capable you are. And this ayah is a proof that the sunnah is just like the Quran in terms of its uh, being a proof. In terms of it to be a source for our deen. قال الله تعالى second one وما ينطق عن الهوى إن هو إلا وحي يوحى نعم Nor does he speak of his own desire. It is only a revelation that is revealed. So whatever the Prophet ﷺ had commanded us is from the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this ayah is a proof that the sunnah is a revelation. Even though it's a revelation different from the Quran, it is not to be recited. Like when we recite the Quran, alif, lam, mim, has, asher, hasanat, ten, hasanat, ten, hasana. This is recitation. So the Quran is to be recited, but the sunnah is not recitable. To be read, but not recitable as the Quran. We make one, that's bid'ah. If you recite the Quran, the sunnah, in the way you recite the Quran, that's a bid'ah. So both of them are from Allah. Prophet ﷺ said, can I, Al-Jibriya used to bring me two things, Quran and can I answer what? Sunnah. He came down with the revelation with the Quran and the revelation as well with what? With the Sunnah. Revelation of the Quran is the Quran. Revelation of the Sunnah, example, for example, the, bold, the old man, sorry, not the old man, the blind man, Ibn Maktoum, when he came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, I've got nobody to lead me to the masjid and between me and the masjid is a valley and lots of trees and lots of beasts in the Medina. Uh, do you find me an excuse to pray at home? He said, yes. And when he left, he said, come back. Do you hear? Hayyala salah, hayyala fala? He said, yes. He said, there is no excuse. Who told him that? Jibreel alayhi salam. And that's Quran or Sunnah? Sunnah. So the Prophet of Allah being told straight away by Jibreel alayhi salam that you should not let this person, because Allah told him that she's not, this person should not give him an excuse. So, Prophet said, أُوْتِيْتُ الْقُرْآنَ مِثْلَهُمَا I've been sent, I've been, uh, I've been uh, uh, revealed to me, or has been sent to me, Quran and similar to it, exactly the similar to it. أُوْتِيْتُ الْقُرْآنَ وَمِثْلَهُ And exactly what it is, Quran, same thing. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the wives of the prophets to call and say, وَذْكُرْنَ مَا يُتَّى and remember uh, uh, what is being recited into your houses. Min al kitabi wal hikmah. What is hikmah here? Sunnah. So the sunnah of the Prophet. So the sunnah, it was something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the wives to bring it you know, to the public, because this is something for the people to learn. What the Prophet of Allah used to do with his wives, what the Prophet of Allah used to sell his wives, and all of that. طيب. Coming now to the following ayah. وقال تعالى قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله ويغفر لكم نعم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم. Say O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم to mankind if you really this is not correct. Say O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم that's not correct. I'm gonna read it from just skip yeah, this. Say correct. 
if you really love Allah, then follow me. Allah will love you and forgive you of your sins. Because if we like say, Allah said, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُونَ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى a ta'ala as well. It's not correct. When we do the ayah, we don't add ta'ala or sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you understand me? We don't do that. It's exactly as the ayah. So when, when Allah says, وَمَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ وَمَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ صلى الله عليه وسلم أَبَا أَحَدٍ It doesn't work like that. You mention it as the ayah. You're not going to be better than Allah Azza wa Jal. طيب. This ayah is something that governs the person who loves the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you love Allah, you, you claim that you love Allah azza wa jal, okay? And yet, you are not upon the path of the Prophet, you are a liar. If you, if you claim that you love Allah, then follow me. Follow me, who's me? Yeah? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, the, the Prophet is telling us, that Allah is telling His Prophet, commanding His Prophet to tell the people, if you claim that you love Allah, then you have to follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if you have followed the Prophet of Allah, then you have not just fulfilled the command of the Prophet of Allah, and the command of Allah, but you have gained something better, which is the love of Allah. يُحَبِّكُمُ Allah, SubhanAllah. Allah loves you. So Allah's love, which is greater than that you are loving to Allah. Which one is greater? Your love to Allah or Allah to love you? Allah to love you, isn't it? Lots of people love Allah, but Allah will not love them. Why? Because they're not following the Prophet of Allah. So if you love Allah, you have to follow the Prophet. And you're going to get better than that, which is Allah will love you. So when some people at that time claim that they love Allah, Azza wa tested them with this ayah, which is what? To follow the Prophet Wasallam. If you claim, then follow the Prophet of Allah. Then you'll have the sin forgiveness as well. This ayah is a proof that the sunnah is the only way, the only path that would lead you to the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. Other than, these, other than that path, it's going to be rejected. قال تعالى لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر Translation of which? Indeed, in the Messenger of Allah, you have a good example to follow for him who hopes for the meeting with Allah and the last day. This ayah is the foundation in having the Prophet of Allah as a role model for us in his sayings and actions and all his situation. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to follow the Prophet of Allah and take him as an example on the day of Al-Ahzab. Al-Ahzab, the confederates, they got together to wipe Islam and Muslims. So in his patience, in his jihad, in his uh, patience to await the, uh, uh, the victory from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the help from Allah azza wa jal. Okay? So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he told those people from the companions and those who are as well, they didn't have the proper iman or even the hypocrites. When they were sort of mm, shaky and are not, you know, sort of not confident and all of that, he said, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا Look at the Prophet of Allah, how he's steadfast. Look at the Prophet of Allah, who's powerful. Look at the Prophet of Allah, who's assured of the victory from Allah Azza wa Jal. So don't worry about these kuffar coming from all over the globe to wipe you out. They were so scared that they were not even one of them to go and defecate. You know defecate, to go and urinate? Scared. They've got the Jews from one side, and they have betrayed, and they've got the kuffar from the other side. 10,000, 10,000. And they are not more than three, four thousand. They're going to kill them. So the Prophet of Allah, he was firm. So he said, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ And وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا So let you have the Prophet as a role model. قال الله تعالى فلا وربك لا يؤمنون حتى يحكموك فيما شجر بينهم ثم لا يجد في أنفسهم حرجا مما قضي ويسلموا تسليما. نعم. But no, by your Rabb they can have no faith until they make you judge in all disputes between them and find in themselves no resistance against your decisions and accept them with full submission. Right. This is an ayah that was revealed because of a story that happened at the time of the Prophet of Allah in Medina where there was Shiraj al-Hara. 
canals where water comes, where the water from the rain comes, and the people start to irrigate their lands and their orchards. And we had Zubair ibn Awam, an, what a dispute with one of the Ansar. His name was not mentioned because there was going to be a blame onto him. And remember, when there's a blame and criticism, the Sahabi name will not be mentioned. So basically, he disputed. He wanted first to irrigate his land and then Zubair. They went to the Prophet. As Zubair, of course, he is related to the Prophet. He is the son of his auntie, Sophia. Okay? So when the Prophet looked at the situation, he had judged that first, Zubair is to take the water, and then after that, to release the water to his neighbor. Soon as he had judged like this, the Ansari did not like the judgment. He said, and can Ibn Ammatik, is it because he's your cousin, maternal cousin? That means you have favored in him, in, his, in your judgment. A'udhu Billah. A'udhu Billah. And that's when the Prophet ﷺ got so enraged. And before the revelation of this ayah, he said, Zubair, you irrigate your land and send the water to the wall. Don't send it to your neighbor. And Allah Azza wa he has sent the verse to affirm the decision of the Prophet ﷺ. Fala wa rabbika. Nay, by your Lord. No way they will gain the proper belief until they accept you to be an arbitrator, to judge in between, their dis between them in regarding their disputes. Not only that, and after you judge, they will find no resentment, nothing, no hatred to the decision of yours. And they submit in full. That means in full outward, outwardly and inwardly. Submit in full. No, nothing, no hatred in your heart. You have to submit. This is the Prophet ﷺ. Yallahu Akbar. You remember that man who had a ring and it was gold in the Prophet ﷺ. He took it from him and he put it in the land. He said, you're not allowed to put it on. He said, how did you just put it on the land? So one of the people just say, take it and go and sell it and you know, benefit, which is halal. I will never take something the Prophet will never put it down from me. That's the companions. I will never take it. It's gold. It's gold. The mother and her daughter, when he, they had the golden uh, bracelets, the Prophet said, did you, did you give the zakah of this? No, Master He said, do you want to put yourself a fire ring, a fire bracelet? So they gave it for the sake of Allah. Khalas, charity. That's why, the, as, I, as I said, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, don't. And by the way, you need to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the whole of the Quran, did not make an oath by himself except in two places. This one, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ To the end of the verse. And the second one, قَالْ وَفِي السَّمَاءِ رِزْقُكُمْ وَمَا تُعَدُونَ فَوَرَبِّ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِنَّهُ لَحَقٌ مِثْلَ مَا أَنَّكُمْ تَنْطِقُونَ This ayah in Surah Al-Dhariyat is the second oath of the Almighty by Himself. No other places where Allah makes an oath by His own essence. The holy essence of the Almighty Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala except in that ayah in Surah Al-Nisa and this ayah in Surah Al-Dhariyat. And the sort of that is regarding the rizq and the provision. Type. Going to the following. I'll stop here, inshallah. You have the last verse, inshallah, for next week. It's the last verse, isn't it? Uh, yes. Uh, no, there's a one or two. Is it? The next one, is... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me just see it. Type. Okay, we'll just. We'll leave that, inshallah, for next week. Father. If you have any questions, please, regarding what we have heard, please go ahead. And any question which is not regarding what we have heard, please adjourn it to the end. Faddal, closest to the table. Yalla. Yalla, ya abid. Watch for your phone because of the YouTube. No. No, your phone, just bring your phone. Different prayer. So let's say, for example, this person he had missed the Salat al Asr. I would make it two, two, two examples. One is difficult, one is easy. 
The difficult example, the easy example is, person missed the dhuhr, slept through with the time, remembered he did not pray it on, on wudu, and he came to the prayer, or to the masjid, and the imam is doing his asr. Okay, doing the asr. Should he start with the asr, or should he start with the dhuhr which he had missed? For a legitimate excuse, if you have missed it because you pushed it time, no. Prophet Allah said, إِنَّ مَا التَّفْرِطُ فِي Person going overboard when he's awake, he knows what he's doing. No way you can compensate that. There's no way. You can't pray for dhuhr. That's it. You have to pray. Uh, you have to, be, to repent to Allah and pray as much as you can from the voluntary sunnah, just for the sake that Allah will compensate. But to make four instead of four, no way, it's gone. Khalas finished. This is only for the excuse. He slept, and he slept because of a legitimate reason. Now he pushed himself to sleep, and the second one he forgot. So he comes, which prayer he prays? Controversial. The correct opinion? The hadith. Let him pray that particular prayer, which he had missed. There's no expiation except for that way to do it. And that is the correct opinion. So with the iman, you pray with what? The dhuhr. Even he's praying what? Asr. When you finish, then you go what? When you finish, you're going to pray what? Your asr on your own. Okay? You finish, you pray the asr on your own. And by the way, this is opinion of some of the scholars. Shaykh al-Salam Tami says, no, you pray your asr first. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Inna salata kanat ala al-mu'ina The prayer is being prescribed upon the believers to be time book. How can we pray asr before dhuhr? The correct opinion is that hadith in this ayah is, uh, uh, is, is the correct, uh, correct opinion in respect, uh, with respect to the opinion of Shaykh al-Salam Tami. Second example, which is a difficult one, that you forgot to pray the Maghrib, and you came to the Aisha. <laughs> uh, that's a difficult one. Now, you come with the people, and they're going to pray Aisha, and then suddenly you've got, oh my God, I prayed my Maghrib without wudu. Or, oh my God, I have got to pray my Maghrib. We said, you have to pray it what? In order. So, Allahu Akbar Maghrib. Now, when you come to the third rakah, people are going to go up, you intend detachment. So we say it in Arabic, tanwil infisal. You intend to detach yourself. So you continue your prayer on your own for tashahud, for maghrib. Salamu alaikum, salamu alaikum. Then you get up to do the what? The isha. And you've got a trouble as well to explain to the person who's next to you. Because <laughs> that person, what is type of prayers you're doing, this guy? But people who learn it, they will know, they'll understand. And this is the way as well, the only way by which you could as well catch up with a combination that is due to rain, due to gusting wind. Let's say, for example, the Imam had decided in a snowing day to combine. Have you ever prayed combination between Dhar and Asr here on this masjid? Dhar and Asr, yes. Because it's extreme weather. Extreme weather. So let's say this person came to the place and the Imam had started his Asr. The door is gone. Do you understand me? So if he's going to do the Shaykh Islam Taymi, start with the Asr, with the Asr, he cannot make the combination. Do you understand me? He cannot make the combination. The combination is to be doing Dhuhr and then Asr. So when you caught up with the minimum to catch up with a combination is to catch up with anything from the first prayer. So if you want to catch up with the combination, you have to catch up at least, for example, with the tashahud of the dhuhr, of the imam. So when he does the tashahud, you tashahud with him, he's going to now finish his prayer, you're going to get up and continue your what? dhuhr prayer, which is the four rak'ah. The imam is going to say, Allah, the mu'adhan is going to say, Allah, Akbar, Allah, Akbar, for asr. And then you finish your dhuhr, inshallah, before the imam, unless your imam is super, super fast. <laughs> okay, Ferrari imam. So you finish your prayer, which is dhuhr, and then... You do what, what? You do what? Your, uh, if you answer with him, whatever you, call, you, call, you, you catch up with. Wallahu ta'ala alam. And that's the correct opinion. Fadl Muhammad Gambi. What is the latest time? Latest time before tahajjus, before fajr. Before fajr. Latest time to do tahajjus before fajr. Before fajr, even before one minute, 30 seconds. Okay, so it's before fajr. As long as before fajr is not, so, but you can't pray one raka or three raka in one raka, even one raka. You can't pray it in ten seconds. So, if you wanna uh, do the 
Niyat Qiyam, best thing is an hour and a half, or within an hour, not less than that. But some people, you know, the Qiyam is three rak'ah. They could do it in the last 15 minutes. <laughs> nah, no problem. Uh, Prophet Sallallahu uh, he had said that the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he descends in the last third of the night, of each night. So the last third of the night. The later it is, the better it is. وَبِالْأَسْحَارِ هُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ And they seek forgiveness in Ashar. Ashar means Sahur. Sihri meal. You know the meal we take the Sahur? That's the time. Now. Any question now? Open for you. Just a fadal. Huh? Between the Adhan and the Fajr and the Qam, how much? Can you pray Witter? No. Once the Fajr is... Fajr is on, unless you slept, unless you forgot. Yes, you could pray it at any time. But to push it, no, there's no, there's no water. It's gone, it's finished. If you slept and you woke up before Fajr? Okay, so you, you are a person who prays his water and you slept and that is an excuse which is legitimate. Not a person who has been watching, as we said. So you're legitimate. You came and you woke up after Fajr. You prayed as it is. Three rak'ah, five rak'ah, seven rak'ah. You understand me? But a person who does not pray this all the time, sometimes he doesn't, sometimes he doesn't. Okay? And he intended to pray that night for Qiyam. And he for basically he had pain. He slept and he prayed 12 rak'ah. To get the full reward during the day. Okay? Now, Fadal. Sunnah Ratiba. Yeah. Any Sunnah ratib of any prayer, it has to be within the time of the obligatory prayer. So when we say the Sunnah al ratib for the Dhuhr, which is the prayer of the voluntary before Dhuhr, the Sunnah before the, it has to be after the start of the Dhuhr. It cannot be before the start of the Dhuhr. Otherwise, it will be from the Duha, part of the Duha. And even maybe it could be in the time where you're not supposed to pray at all, which is the Dua, the, just about 10 minutes before Dhuhr time. Okay? So we wait until the starts and then we start with our sunnah. Now, four rak'ah is the maximum before dhuhr. Yes? What advice can we give to a sister who takes preference going to lessons while leaving her home untidy or people are, don't have food to eat? Yeah, the, the, this question, subhanAllah, I, I think I had it from a sister. Uh, and uh, I said, inshallah, I will answer this question, and I keep forgetting. It's been how many, maybe a month or so. <laughs> so alhamdulillah, that this question has been put. Any person, we have talked about, if you remember, how to organize our priorities. Any person who does something, even if it is important, but on the expense of compromising something else which is important, that's not correct. You remember the hadith with me, hadith, Salman al Farisi and Abu Darda. You remember that? Abu Darda, radiallahu an, he had his brother Salman al Farisi. Salman al Farisi came to the house and he saw his wife not dressed up properly. What's wrong? So, well, your brother has got nothing to do with women. So, Abu Darda, he came. His brother, as in brother in Islam, Abu Darda came. And he, he made it to his brother Salman food. He said to him, eat, for verily I'm fasting. Salman said, I'm not going to eat until you eat with me. Okay, he broke his fast for his brother to eat. Then he's about to sleep, Salman. So Abu Darda wanted to make Qiyam. He said, sleep, I can't sleep until you sleep. So he slept. When it was just the last third of the night, he said, now you get up. And they prayed the Qiyam. Then he said to him, verily, your Lord has a right. Due right. Your wife has got due right family. Your body has due right. 
Your body is going to complain against you. Why are you exerting it, putting it in difficulty, pushing it to the limits? When he went to the Prophet Allah to ask about what Salman, he said to him, he said, yes, Salman is more understanding than you. Follow Salman. Salman is upon the correct. Sadaqa Sulaiman. Sadaqa Salman. So this sister or the brother, for the sake of coming to any class, or coming to my class, and yet is leaving his children unattended, with no food and no drink, wallahi, this, the, the reward that you're going to gain from coming to the class is not going to match the sins that you have already incurred upon yourself by neglecting your children. No. Now these days, you could care about your children and at the same time watch for the class. MashaAllah, we've got technology. Just put that YouTube, whatever. <laughs> uh, live streaming we've got now. And while you are feeding the baby and cooking the chicken or whatever, you can just look at it. Uh, you know, keep your eye. Don't burn the food, though. <laughs> uh, and this class is more of a, a class of listening rather than less of watching. Unless there is something I want to explain with my hands. But I, I know that watching is not like listening. That's 100%. When you go home and listen, it's not going to be as in, as in you being all, all here when you are watching. It's not like watching, it's like, like hearing. So it's not correct to keep sisters, for example, inside where they can't see the sheikh, they can't really... Either they could be at the back watching and be part of the, the lecture, or they could be in a different room, but at least they have what, a screen. A screen which is where they could see the gathering. It's not a screen that really focusing on the face of the sheikh, so it will be fitna for the women. And start with, oh, I like him, you know. Instead of thinking about the class, and I like him. <laughs> he's nice, he's for me. <laughs> Allah al -mustan. Question, yeah. Is it allowed to pray in a masjid where on its walls are written, Ya Rasulallah? Is a prayer allowed to pray in a masjid which is, well, first of all, this masjid, yani, is it just, you know, the whole, the whole thing you know about the masjid, that there is something written on the wall? I mean, uh, I would say to ask about the imam. It could be somebody else had written it. But most likely, it's such a masjid like this, if it's been written in a, 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 a calligraphy, in a right, right, nice way, it means that the masjid, they are pertaining to the Brailwis. They say, Ya Rasulullah, they call upon the Prophet. If it is such a masjid like that, I wouldn't pray behind the Imam. I would pray in the masjid of the Sunnah. Uh, okay, so we'll keep avoiding that masjid. But I just said, you have to investigate. But if it is just you are coming to the town for the first time, I would say avoid this, go to someone else. But as your prayer, will be prayer is valid. Unless you knew the Imam, he is believing in such uh, uh, corrupted aqidah, hazar, nazar, and all of that, then you can't pray behind him. Naam. Jazakallah khairan, Shaykh. Now, some people make hadith with melody to help memorize. Is this an innovation? Uh, in the melody is different from the Quran. He's not doing, he's not implementing the ahkam al tajweed on the hadith. That's a bid'ah with a consensus. But to you saying to me, like for example, Qala Rasulullah kullu ummati yadkhulun al jannata illa man aba. We have seen some of the Salaf doing that. Even our Shaykh al Bani says this is not Sunnah, it's from a bid'ah. But we understand that uh, some of the uh, scholars, which are respected scholars from the Salafi scholars, they tell sometimes their students to recite for them in that way. Uh, I would preserve, hold myself from saying that it's a bid'ah, but I would say that well, there's no proof for saying this. Maybe they have a proof, but we can't see a proof for that. Okay? But I don't want to dare myself. Shaul Sheikh al-Advani says, not, not from the Sunnah, it's a To recite the hadith and the melody, okay? And unless, unless, you want to, to, to make it easy for you to memorize. You know the poetry, when you memorize it in a melody, much easier to memorize it without a melody. You know that? So if the memorization of a poetry that can be helped by the melody, I would say more priority goes to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. So you want to memorize it in a melody, because the poetry, you know, remember it in melody, uh, with, a, with a tone of the melody, easy to memorize, rather than like to read it like a no melody. And that's, uh, as I said, the Prophet ﷺ, our, our Prophet ﷺ said, Beautify the Qur'an with your voices. 
نعم تفضل احسن الله عليكم شيخ هذا نيكست كويستشن از وات از ذا رولينج اون كريبتو كرنسي لايك بيت الله اعلم كريبتو كرنسي يا اخواني اي ام ذس نيدز لجنا ذس نيدز ا كوميتي اوف سكولرز نوت بيبل لايك مي Committee of scholars, they will, you know, say about this crypto and all about. I don't put myself in something which is, you know, gray, gray land, gray area. I don't know. Then I could make a million, then a million is haram. Ah, be very hard for me to leave the million. Very hard. I can just make myself fatwa. Maybe it's halal. Maybe there's another saying of the sheikh. Let me wait. It's a million. So let me go. In. Why should I go into it and put myself into fitna? Yeah, fatwa. Is the one? Is the woman's face our? Well, this fact is a controversial, but without any hesitation, we say it is not our. Without any hesitation. But despite there is a difference among the scholars, Al uh, Jumhur, it is not our. Most of the scholars are not our. But if the husband or the father, who is the wali of the woman, he said, That he wants her face to be covered, it becomes compulsory. We're not saying it's our face, but it has become compulsory for her to cover her face. Okay? Now, Fadr. Fadr. Okay, is the woman obliged uh, to cook for her husband? We'll say she must have been reading for Ibn Hazm a lot. Uh, uh, that's not correct. Khwani, it's not just the woman obliged just to go to the bed. It's not that just that. As the woman is, uh, she has, you refer to my, uh, I've got a series about the woman and what she's supposed to do in marriage course, called marriage course. It's on the channel. Go there and there's proofs and everything regarding this issue. This is a bit has an opinion. We don't take it on board. And only the woman is obliged just to do the bed. That means to go to your intercourse and that's it. After that, there's nothing. So if you tell her to do something, no, you're not obliged. Not cook for me, not to cook for me. What life is this? What life is this? The man is supposed to go and work and get the money and support the family. And the wife, she says, I'm not going to cook for you. So you're going to cook for himself as well? Allah Musta'an. طيب تفضل uh, 12 ركعة which is yeah, to compensate the night prayer yeah. well done question very good question is that into, on top of the sunnah wallahu a'lam you don't need to put the other sunnah so the 12 ركعة of your, of your uh, duha will make up for that you don't need to put, but it's very good question I like that uh, So your 12 raka of your, uh, the, the duha, by the way, prayer, minimum is two. Maximum, scholars differ, the correct opinion, there's no limit. Some they say four, some they say eight, some they say 12, some they say there's no limit. And the hadith, the law, there's no limit for it. Different the hadith, is all of them authentic. Wa subhanakallah, bihamdik, ashadu allah, ilan tasafir, zakumullah khairan, wa barakallah fikum. Salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How was your trip? Your, uh, I, I left before Maghrib. Your, it's very nice. It's very nice. But, uh, very nice. Where is it from? Where is it from? Is it from where? Uh, it's from Tooting. Tooting. It's called Istanbul Food.